Hello, everybody. Thank you very much for joining in. We are starting with the conversation right now. I'll be bringing up my slide. One minute. All right, uh, welcome to the session, the ILA session. Uh, uh, we combine it with our company, Kelp. We've been running it for almost four years now, and we are happy and glad that every time we find a very unique topic to discuss. So today's topic is, are posh training a necessity or luxury in cultivating safe workplaces? Um, my name is Smita. I'm CEO and founder of Kelp. I have with me two lovely people whom we have been interacting over a while. Okay, so let me quickly introduce you to them. Uh, first, we have Vandana DV, who has 25 years of total work experience in the coaching, training, and learning and development space. Um, she's, uh, uh, she's been working in the space of Posh for multiple years now. Uh, eight, 18 plus years of experience being an independent consult consultant and she's trained 20,000 and more personnel, uh, virtual cl class as well as classroom. She's a government certified posh enabler, compliance architect and contributes as an SME to, independent, uh, to implement the law. Um, so she's trained managers, team leaders and employees at all levels. And she has worked with multiple industries as well. So welcome Vandana. Thank you Smita, thank you so much. And a very good evening to everyone. Thank, Thank you, Vandana. Vandana, if you want to quickly say something about yourself, you're more than welcome. Oh, uh, nothing that just to add to your kind words. It's been a great journey in the Porsche space. Uh, trainings, I believe, are uh, a forte of any Porsche trainer because it all comes back to the drawing board, how well you sensitize. So I feel, uh, to you know, put it in a nutshell, uh, it all... It's, it sums up to how well do you sensitize and how well can you train people and give them the awareness on a, on a subject matter as sensitive as sexual harassment. And it's been great learning every day across uh, industries towards this. Just Thank that. You. Yeah. Thank you, Vandana. Uh, our next panel member is Arokya Selvi. She's an Associate HR Director at Flatron Solutions. A She's a certified grace place to work professional with a fast track career graph uh, with a rich, uh, diverse, functional of experience of 15 years in human resources. And she's worked in industries like IT, ITES, consulting, startups, mid-size and public limited companies. I think she covers it all. She's mm -hmm. a strategic architect of mid-size public limited companies. Uh, um, sorry. Uh, she's a strategic art architect credited with implementing innovative path-breaking HR initiatives to streamline processes and capitalize on organizational growth opportunities. So she's done it all in HR space, right? From competency mapping to uh, manpower planning to employee relations. But Arokya and I connected really strongly when I met her at Posh Awards, Kelp HR Posh Awards. And her passion for the subject was something that really drew me closer to her you know when you speak to her and when you speak to her about initiatives in posh her eye twinkles and you can see that there's so much of passion about the subject so arokya welcome on board thank you thank you smitha hey all uh good evening and uh thank you so much for you know joining this session and um thank you smitha for the wonderful introduction and uh you know, honestly, as you mentioned that this is one of the topic very close to my heart. And uh, apart from HR, this is one like, you know, I really wanted to take it very seriously till my, you know, 60 years or 70 years. I do have a passion to work, um, you know, for the HR industry until, you know, 60 and 70. And this is one of the topic I don't want to leave. And you, you know, made it right. So Thank you so much for the lovely introduction and we have a lot of things to discuss on this topic because I being the believer of 
um, you know, prevention is always not better, cheaper than cure. Being the you know budget owner as well as being the you know uh, the HR head of the India operations, I believe that this topic is a wonderful topic to discuss in this evening. So thank you so much, Swetha. Thank you, Arok. Okay. I'm really sorry if I've not introduced you properly. I'm sure you do a lot of work in HR space, but you're good. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, coming back to what law talks about uh, trainings, right? So I've picked up a small paragraph and it is there on my screen. So what, this is basically employer's responsibility. And there is a lot of debate who is an employer. So in corporate, people who have joined in from corporate, we equal, equate employer to HR. So it comes to HR's responsibility to organize workshops and awareness programs at regular intervals. Okay, to sensitize employees with the provisions of the act and orientation of even IC members is their responsibility. So this is what is mentioned and less is left for your interpretation. So there has been, now it's been 11 years since we have this law and it is interpreted in various ways, right? Mm. So I have multiple questions on this. We always on day to day get so many um, thought processes that should we just have plain Jane presentation? Is it really important? Can we just give them a booklet which they can read through? So today I'm going to pick these two people's brains to really understand what do they think about it? Yeah. And answer the most important question. Is it luxury or it is necessity? All right. So let's get started. I'm going to stop sharing my screen so we can see them and ask them a few questions. So if I have to ask my first question to um, Arokya, it is, why are posh trainings necessary? Is it luxury or it's a mandate and that is why it is? What is the difference between mandate, necessity and luxury? Oh, to start off with this session, you know, it's such a lovely question you have posted, uh, posted on the screen, uh, uh, Smita. So um, talking about posh training, each you know, um, like uh, to create, you know, past training, though it's a mandate one um, with respect to the legal, um, the past training objective of, you know, conducting these kind of, you know, past training, it's create an, you know, safe and respectful and a productive, you know, work environment. It's a legal, you know, requirement. Many countries across, I'm talking about, has various, you know, uh, laws and conditions in terms of, you know, conducting the past training. It is not only applicable to India, like uh, these kind of, you know, laws are available in other countries too. Uh, say for an example, the, you know, take um, the, you know, US government. The US government, they have various states. Each state has its own, you know, posh law. So, but in India, we have one law that is applicable for all the, you know, regions. But, um, you know, the, the reporting mechanism may change, but when it comes to the training, it, it states one. Uh, the training is mandatory one. It's a legal compliance. And also, more than, you know, legal one, it is actually creating and helping the organization, uh, you know, create a safe work environment. Because, uh, you know, the um, companies which are focused more on work culture, uh, where employees feel safe and respected. So these kind of trainings are very much important. Also, these kind of trainings, um, you know, help the organizations uh, and the employees uh, to, you know, how to report any such incidents happen. And what are the consequences of engaging such behavior. So these kind of awareness and sensitizations, uh, you know, uh, we are able to, uh, you know, do that. And also whether it is an, you know, luxury or it's a mandate one and whether it's an, you know, necessity one. So I'm, I'm, I'm hearing three uh, words, luxury, <laughs> necessity and mandate. It's very important for everybody to understand the difference between these three. And, um, you know, mandate, it's nothing but it's a legal requirement. So conducting the past training yearly once and conducting the ICC training early once, 
you know that is the you know mandatory one legal requirement it's a kind of an you know insurance for us to safeguard from you know the legal penalties because you know we cannot play with that it's a mandatory requirement to run a business in india if you ask me this is the basic level that we need to do and talking about necessity even in the absence of legal requirement Past training is a necessity for maintaining the safe and respectful and protective work environment. And, um, you know, um, I always, you know, talk about being a mother of two at, you know, home and being the mother of 300 at office. I always, you know, go greedy because I'm a greedy person in terms of, you know, creating a safe and secure environment for my kids. And similarly, I want to create a safe and secure, and employ, you know, environment for all my employees at office. So in that case, um, my, you know, sixth standard kid, I have an, you know, sixth standard kid, girl, girl baby, and uh, she's, you know, getting into sixth grade right now. I always talk about her, you know, um, the the safety around her. If If something happens, what she needs to do, she needs to come and talk to me, she needs to explain to me, I don't want her to, uh, you know, hold anything or, you know, hold within herself not to share about it, not to talk about it, because that will create a lot of mental pressure. Similarly, I have taken the same approach to, you know, going to the office and talking all, all of my employees. So more than the, the requirement, official requirement, the legal requirement, organizations going one level above, uh, you know, conducting various kind of, you know, initiatives or conducting, you know, more than one, maybe, you know, quarterly one session or six months once one session making sure that everybody understands and aware of the you know this um, posh um, you know requirement that is necessity luxury part this is where you know i'm more in line with that because uh, the organization go beyond the basic uh, posh training requirements by providing additional resources like advanced workshops guest speakers and um, you know also enhanced support services if at all any counseling services people these all you know some organization may think that this is not required because for me to the top level management they will think that for me the numbers looks good profit loss revenue this is what you know more focused to me but in order to attain all these things in order to reach all these things they need to have the fundamental, the basic trust element from the employees. So they need to gain that in order, say for an example, if an employee is suffering with these kind of, you know, um, a posh or any harassment, you know, uh, stuff, then that cannot, that person cannot be productive. That person, you know, doesn't know how, whom to report or how to report. So all these things, they should come up with, you know, advanced training or workshops or, uh, you know, um, or whatever the you know best way they can educate uh, you know their employees. So in a nutshell, if you ask me, Smita, mandate is the legal requirement. It's non-negotiable. Necessity, it's something like an you know essential for effective and safe functioning. Say for an example, going the you know driving the car at you know sixty to seventy uh, you know kilometer speed per hour. So no harm. I'm gonna give way to everybody. So let me you know sit around say and drive my car luxury is all about of you know enhancement that improves but not an you know essential one so this is what you know i feel the difference between these three smita thank you thank you so much i think it makes a lot of sense because it's been yeah. 11 years since we have this law right and people are saying okay if we do a plain jane presentation okay and are unable to convey, see what is communication? Communication is something that is said, is received and absorbed well. So it's two way, it starts and it ends well. So if we are only concentrating on how we are, what we are doing, but we are not concentrating on how it is being received, then there is, there is a fault there, right? So I think while it is mandated, and as Arokya rightly said, while it is mandated, it is important and luxury part should be how we are constantly thinking on engaging our recipients, employees well. So, okay, thank you very much for that. And I think you've summed it up really beautifully to make us understand that what is the difference. And I've heard so many times saying, 
okay, once in a year, we'll get somebody, we'll just do check in the box, we'll send the policy and we are done. No, I think yeah. we have to constantly think how we better ourselves. And that's absolutely. Vandana, yes. Yes, what? absolutely. I couldn't agree more with you, Smitha, because uh, trainings are what orient employees about the entire subject matter. And it's how you train them, the examples that you share, you know, the the recipients, like you rightly said, when they are able to relate the examples shared via training to their workplace, that's where the necessity aspect comes in. So for an employer, it is not just because it is mandated, but it is the need of the hour to be conducting this and to answer uh, Benita's question on chat as well. The law has not defined regular trainings. It is up to the employee, employer to really understand how many times a year do you need it done? Do you need it conducted? But having said that, it's also important for employers to look at maybe from a luxury aspect, be able to, uh, you know, train your managers and leaders uh, separately, your employees, your contract staff. Everyone needs to come under that umbrella. Uh, you could look at, like you said, constant work in progress being ideas of generation. How? To be training differently, whether it is conducting surveys, whether it is through a posh quiz, whether it is probably having theater-based uh, training. So these are luxury aspects that can be roped in by every employer towards training. But the basic mandate of having it effective, whether it is a classroom session, again, to answer Vinita's question, which is the most effective, or it's an e-learning module, it's an absolute necessity is what uh, I would add to say that. Yeah. Thank you, Vandana. Vandana, my next question was to you, that how do posh trainings empower employees to recognize, prevent, and report instance of SH effectively? I mean, is there, do you think it does that? And how do you think it does? I think it is it does that to a very large extent. And I'm not just saying this in terms of new audiences who receive the understanding and sensitization about what this space is all to do with, because most of the people only know what POSH stands for. They really don't know beyond that. They don't even know we are talking about a law. Nobody understands the background of why are we talking about this law? How did it come to being? Why are we emphasizing about the importance of creating safe workplaces? At the end of the day, that's what we're talking about. If we want to eliminate sexual harassment, it's got to do with how do we bring in more safety? And that rests purely on kind of trainings you do. So yes, an employee does get to understand what is the definition of sexual harassment? And I've had participants tell me, you know what? Till now, I thought it was only if somebody touches me inappropriately. Whereas when we talk about verbal harassment, the fact that we talk about non-verbal harassment, gestures, stalking, digital stalking, so much that has been added to the entire understanding today, literally keeps it as an eye-opener for any employee to know more about the subject. And I always say that the first step to prevention is recognition. So if I don't even know how to recognize what is sexual harassment, how on earth am I going to go about preventing it? So there comes in the effectiveness of your training. Uh, the, the participants and the employees also get to learn through our trainings that there is an internal committee which has been specifically formulated by the employer to be looking into harassment issues Employees understand who is part of the committee when you introduce them via your awareness sessions. Uh, employees get to learn where they can actually go to, even if they have a doubt or a dilemma in their minds. Not necessarily to raise a complaint, but to be even able to talk about their issues. There is a committee that looks into this absolutely confidentially. And that creates confidence. So prevention happens or the learning about how to prevent it happens. Everything through the way you train, the amount you put in, uh, the variety you offer in terms of the subject matter. And that's how uh, prevention takes place through the understanding and awareness of what is said 
in the training room. I also believe that uh, as an enabler and as a trainer, the kind of cases and complaints that I get to see allows me to bring the right kind of examples into the training room. You know, when we talk about, it's not compliment your colleague or co-worker every day. And I'm saying this because I've had people tell me, I thought I should tell you being pretty every day. I didn't realize that she's being to the extent that I'm actually her from top to bottom to then pay a compliment to her. But the fact that talking about this as an example has created that awareness. So this is also prevention. I need to know where to put the line. And I need to know what is acceptable, what is professional etiquette. All comes via Absolutely. So, so brilliantly summed up, uh, Vandana. But, you know, what happens is a lot of organizations do not want to speak about it because they say cases will increase. So my next question exactly is to Arokya, that do you think increasing in number of cases, meaning the tox there is toxicity at workplace and if there are less cases, then it's a safe workplace. What do you think about that? All right. So I think, you know, I'm getting a lot of interesting questions. Um, I would like love to, you know, address this question with uh, my, you know, two interpretations. Say for an example, you know, the positive side as well as negative side of it. And uh, the first and foremost one, like um, our, on if you are, you know, taking some, you know, criterias, uh, maybe, you know, I can pick up, you know, two to three and I'll let you know one by one. So if you're taking the aspect of awareness and reporting culture, the potential interpretations, if you're, uh, you know, talking about or a possible interpretation, the positive side of it, uh, you know, for an organization conducting, uh, you know, training and doing all the, you know, work, what best they can do. It's a, if they are still getting the higher number of cases, that's good. Because that could indicate that employees are well informed about, you know, their own rights and they feel confident that, okay, the incident happened. I don't need to tolerate anymore. Let me go and report, you know, report that incident. I know I, I don't have any, you know, I don't need to worry about anyone. So which means that's a positive interpretation. We can get it if we are, you know, getting more uh, cases, especially on the awareness and reporting, uh, you know, culture uh, side, if an organization having it. But on the other side, being an, you know, devil advocate, on the other side, if I need to, you know, talk about it, this could also reflect the more occurrence or higher occurrences of harassments, indicating that potential, you know, issues in the workplace behavior, because this is, this is an, you know, common behavior in the workplace. Whether, you know, the awareness session is not working out really very well, or employees may feel that you know if I get compliant, I will get, I will be you know retaliated, or what somebody will think about me. They are not having that comfortable play you know zone to go and report it. So from the you know awareness and reporting culture perspective, I'm thinking that these are all the positive and negative you know interpretation. Also, I was you know talking you know about the the fundamental element of running the business, especially we are all relying on the you know talents uh, talents you know uh, capabilities. When I'm talking about that, the trust we are getting it from the employees. That is the foundation. You know, we have to make it. Every organization should make it stronger to build the builder on it. You know, a pillar on it. So, if I have to talk about trust again, trust in the system, the positive side of you know more number of cases when it comes to you know, when people are you know having trust in the system is okay. Being an employee, I trust my company. I trust the system in place. So. I'm, you know, I'm getting, you know, being a proceeding officer, I'm getting more complaints because employees are having trust in the organization that organization will investigate the, you know, cases and give, you know, proper judgment on the negative, you know, interpretation side. Okay. If cases are frequent, it might show persistent issues and that not being, you know, resolved adequately. Adequately, being the you know proceeding officer, I'm not able to resolve the cases adequately, and that is actually you know uh, going to create an you know additional problem, and it's more of like an you know ongoing problem with in the organization when we see you know higher uh, uh, cases, and also uh, 
the management response also plays a vital role in this. When we are here getting, you know, higher, uh, uh, you know, cases, lot of cases, uh, the positive side of it is, okay, not only, you know, HR is talking about it, not only the posh committee is talking about it, even the top tone is, you know, hearing, they are hearing the tone, they are hearing the voice from the top level. So, which means um, the, the, the management is proactive in terms of, you know, addressing these issues and can encourage reporting and contribute to the transparent environment. So, this is the positive side of if people are having uh, manage, you know, the trust in the management and the, uh, you know, response from the management, they are convinced, but still, you know, we are getting a lot of high cases. On the other side, the negative side of it, uh, more of like the repeated cases and uh, without effective resolution, uh, can directly link to the management inability to create an you know safe and respectful environment workplace meta. So uh, these are the three factors on the both side, positive and negative. I could you know positively you know think of it. So the in a nutshell, a high number of you know posh cases can be a significant problem uh, or problematic culture in the at workplace. But it can also indicate uh, effective, uh, you know, reporting or supportive environment for the victim to come forward. On the negative side, the lower number of, you know, posh cases can be a positive sign. It, it reflects the workplace is safe and respectful, uh, you know, workplace the company is striving to. However, it also be an, you know, red flag indicating that potential, you know, unreported, uh, cases due to fear or lack of trust in the system or uh, maybe an you know insufficient or don't have you know much awareness about how to report it yeah absolutely bang on and uh, uh Aroke, just extending i think you mentioned about senior leadership uh, be, uh, uh you know uh, setting a tone in the organization so just taking a cue from there do you think senior leaders have any role to play in uh, success, ensuring that there is a successful intervention training program, it is more effective. Do you think senior leaders can do anything about that? Absolutely. And, uh, you know, this is a brilliant one because we cannot make noise just, you know, using one hand. We have to, you know, use both our hand to clap and to make noise. And uh, HR and Posh Committee can't, you know, keep knocking the door and it will not, you know, open. So senior management plays a vital role here. So for this question, let me take you guys back to my, you know, the example at home. Um, I generally, you know, talk to my, uh, you know, kids about the safety and how they need to protect themselves, how they need to report to me, all these things. But also, I encourage my family members to go and talk to my, you know, daughter. Say for an example, my husband, when she, when he, you know, takes her out, I generally, not, not in a, you know, a, a secured or at home environment, we don't want her to talk about it. When we are going for a long drive, at a casual talk, we are, you know, um, we are ensuring that Kids are getting the message not only from mom, my papa also talking about, about this, my grandma also talking about this, which means if something happens outside, I, I, I have, you know, uh, trusted people at home where I can come and, you know, report it. Similarly, taking that approach to, you know, office, senior leadership and management plays a crucial role in ensuring the success and effectiveness of the posh, you know, training. And um, as I said earlier, Setting the tone from the top is very important, important because that is giving a lot of, you know, commitment from their end, um, you know, um, creating the respectful environment and, um, you know, zero tolerance on these kind of issues. And also, I want them to lead by example because... People generally follow leaders. So leaders should be the role model and respectful and inclusive behavior. So definitely, you know, setting the tone from the top is very much important. And that's yeah. the reason, you know, I what I do uh, when I create the posh policy, I make them as the, you know, reviewer. I make them as the, you know, enforcement, you know, uh, officers. Apart from the PASH committee, we do have the enforcement officers. I make them as the enforcement officers. I my you know organization if you look at it all the senior managers whenever they are having their department all hands meeting or global all hands meeting and even precise example my md 
uh, he have you know he generally you know has one on one with the employees towards the last week of the you know month so three fundamental questions he asks are you okay with the organization is there anything bothering you anything you know or are you feeling safe at work so this is the you know basic question that he generally you know starts with uh, during his one on one so when people are you know talking more and more about uh, you know their workplace you know safety definitely people will you know understand that they are working in an uh, environment uh, which respects you know everybody's safety and also the senior management what i expect from hr and so i think you know a lot of hr people would have joined in this call so what we are you know facing in a day to day life is that allocation of the resources it can be you know the budget we generally you know uh, you know uh, face a lot of problem because okay you wanted to conduct a training right okay i'll you know uh, allocate you know one hour of my resource time to you know provide them the training okay budget okay this is the you know budget 10k 20k that's it right okay fine so when we when you are involving your senior management into this when senior management understands the importance of you know this topic definitely you know they they will ready to invest in training and also they would ready to support any kind of you know so if for an example if you wanted to engage any counseling external counseling specialist they will always you know welcome and uh, you know um, support us so uh, in a nutshell you know to conclude this to, to conclude this topic uh, smita i would say that senior leadership and management are instrumental in the success of the uh, you know effectiveness of past training and um, their active involvement from setting up the policy to till you know uh, maybe allocating the resources leading by example whatever i have you know talked about it if they are really really you know focused on that then this is going to be you know nothing but awesome but also ingrained uh, you know into the fabric of you know organization so that should be in the dna of the organization so the holistic approach helps create a workplace where all the employees feel safe uh, you know respected and valued thank you aruk and i i can't agree more so as yeah. uh, posh consultant myself or a posh trainer myself multiple times i've engaged with senior leaders who have actually set a tone set a context but i also want to share with you what 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 you beautifully said that they shouldn't only be preaching but they also should be practicing yeah. unfortunately for me in last two years 2023 and now 2024 i had two courses in each of this year which was against a senior leader who was training or setting context in one of my posh sessions and it is such a shocker to know that these are the people who are just preaching and yeah. not listening right so not this acceptable. this is shocking right so i mean there's no point in just you know i i have this favorite example that if you yourself want your children to read you have to read in front of them or they have to see you reading you can't be on your mobile phone and expect your kids to start reading right so exactly like that if senior leaders are coming and uh, saying okay follow posh policy have respectful behaviors and you yourself are going and being a perpetrator which is a complete no no right yeah, it, it stems from the top yeah it the top below is what people observe learn by example and you can't just talk about this. you need to be uh, setting examples by doing and what we see is what we follow so yes it percolates from the top uh, and leaders play a very instrumental role in the way they speak in their attitude in their language most importantly in the way they treat people and i think uh, you know uh, not enough can be said about that no, no matter the designation no matter uh, the 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 stature that you occupy organization when you everybody with same respect no matter who he is i think that is a culture that's followed across and it becomes attitude it becomes <laughs> culture is not built in a day it's when we observe our leaders is when we start practicing so absolutely it stems from the top in terms of behavior include policies they all walk the talk together so yeah thank you very much for adding vandana 
I'm going to ask you very pointed questions about what do you think are the best practices? I mean, if you could name three best practices in training from to have an impactful training, what do you think, according to you, are the best things to do? And which you must have observed, you, you are connected with so many organizations. I'm sure you would know those. Yeah. So to begin with, uh, I think when a person enters the organization at the induction stage, is a very crucial point for a person to get the understanding of the subject matter. So training brings to fore the induction training, number one. It speaks about the policy of the organization that the employee understands. It speaks of prohibitory practices as well. And uh, how an employee needs to understand that right at the beginning when they step in. So it also creates the security feel that I'm entering an organization that has invested into all of these things and I need to keep up and hold forth. So induction level training, in my opinion, and I've seen this across, probably are not on the same far across. It depends. Some say we are in our induction module that was. Some say we do it for day. Some say we actually do it a couple of days later so as to stress on the importance. No matter what, induction is a very crucial stage to introduce, uh, you know, training in terms of posh. Having uh, refresher trainings for employees who are already sensitized from time and again needs to be built in because uh, as much as we see, as much as we hear, it goes off our minds. So nothing more effective than a classroom session where a trainer can actually stand in front, not necessarily talk about a PPT through that, but in live examples and real life situations, case studies, case scenarios, which are very relevant to workplace, which, you know, you see employees nodding their head and saying, yes, you're right. This has happened. I'm in position. Yes, this happened with her. So people, when they are able to relate, you know the effectiveness of the module is already there. And that is a very crucial step again. Manager training sets, I can't speak enough of them because when a manager is sensitized right, he knows how to take care of a team member brings an issue to him. A manager sensitized right knows very well how not to confuse behavior. A manager when sensitized right knows that if he so much to act as a bridge between the IC and his team member. So trainings is what gives them all of this on that platform. And therefore, it is induction, manager, employee awareness for the staff, for contract work, is absolutely recognized as the most effective where you can get the message across and, you know, get your outcome as well. So, yeah, I hope that answers, uh, you know, your uh, question. I, I heard you loud and clear from, you know, various experiences that you have had. Arokya, you have been winner of Posh Awards, right? So, mm -hmm. as, as an organization who has been winning awards for creating safe workplaces, what are your insights? How do you think... Uh, impactful trainings uh, you know what are the best practices that you all practice or what you've seen in the industry of course okay all right so um as i you know mentioned earlier this is the you know luxury package the organization you know can opt for it so um based on you know what i have implemented in the organization so we um you know more than the classroom training so those are all the you know the mandatory one necessity one but going beyond beyond that Maybe, you know, uh, the conducting the mimes, conducting the theater shows or any kind of, you know, the stage shows, that is creating a lot of things. So more than, you know, talking, if they are seeing visually, okay, this is the acceptable behavior. This is the not acceptable behavior at the workplace. So these kind of, you know, mimes, say for an example, you don't need to uh, hire an, you know, artist to come and, you know, talk about that, come and, you know, act on it. Have your own employees and let that, it can be, you know, a flawful one. It cannot be an, you know, flawful one. Don't mind about it. Just, you know, record that or because, you know, if you are conducting being the, you know, hybrid model, you cannot have everybody, you know. Um, uh, role plays are what you're, I think, highlighting. Role plays involving uh, 
employees to actually be in that situation which allows them to understand this absolutely vadana so um, you know the mime is a successful one where i have engaged my own employees to act about you know what is the acceptable behavior what is the not acceptable behavior and that is very well you know welcomed by all the employees because they are seeing their own you know counterparts their own colleagues are you know acting in that you know mind that is actually you know creating curiosity curiosity in, in terms of you know watching that you can you know put it that in your intranet sites second one uh the recorded you know short films uh, so last year what we have done uh, we have done an you know short film about creating the lgbtq awareness so um, you know uh, we do have the policy to hire uh, you know everybody because we don't have uh, any um, you know reservation on any gender or any sexuality so we are welcome which means you know we are ready to welcome everybody if you are ready to welcome everybody people already in the house should be ready to welcome everybody how am i going to create the awareness so for that we recorded a short film we shot a you know short film and shared it with everybody if somebody you know a gay or lesbian if, if coming and you know sitting uh, sitting or you know working next to you how how you know what is the behavior that is expected from you know the company so maybe these kind of innovative you know approaches in terms of you know providing training to the employees that is actually you know flaw that is actually you know wow uh, employees are you know getting it um, seriously smita lovely and amazing actually many organizations and uh, while we do the uh, 25 safest workplaces award many organization their best practices have also said you know as you rightly mentioned arokya of shooting their own people they hold a competition so larger the organization that they get multiple videos and everybody is engaged and want to know who won the competition so whoever wins the competition they are skit is displayed across and they are part of this uh, a large conglomerate so it it goes from one end to another end yes sir also okay. also to measure the effectiveness of the training program we do have fact finders in place so the past committee members three months once we meet for the internal compliance committee the one of the task for the past committee members is to go around for the three months talk to various people in the organization ask them you know basic questions some you know random questions do you know who are all the you know uh, past committee members do you know what is you know comes under the harassment and just a basic question and see whether they are able to answer if they are not able to answer talk to the presiding officer immediately if they are able to answer well and good record that so this is one of the you know objective and the task for the uh, past committee members great you are you are really creating strong uh, posh uh, ambassadors let's not call them committee members they are posh <laughs> ambassadors for you okay yes. pat on your back for that so i yes. have yes yes so, one in i think sometimes as committee member when you just do random you know casual conversations by talking to employees hey do you know what the policy of our organization is do you know to find the posh policy of the organization and the response you get across really shows you the health of the organization in terms of their understanding even randomly asking somebody do you know how sexual do you know how sexually harassed you would be to understand it or how does it uh, me what does it mean to you how would you define it various questions across were put forth by managers at the last 5 minutes of the meeting or random checks done Reported to the IC or even IC members stepping to do such checks really brings back a lot of feedback about how much more there is to do, and I think that really brings it back to the drawing table, which is more and more awareness, therefore more trainings. Absolutely, absolutely, bang on, uh, Vandana. I want to ask you that while we are talking about posh trainings, is it a good idea? can the posh training be integrated with dei trainings or initiatives with the company what do you think about that i think clearly uh, that they are two peas in a pod posh and dei must go hand in hand and i uh, getting to see more and more organizations wake up this uh, the fact that it's like dealing with two sisters we talk about posh or talk about sexual harassment as the the iceberg right so there's a lot more underneath when we handle that underneath is where we are talking about how to 
the diversity in the first place that we are already. If you look at every organization, it's all diverse. But uh, are we missing that diversity in the first place? That's where training about it comes in. Are we being inclusive in our approach? Are we being fair? Are we being empathetic? Are we talking about equity? Uh, are we uh, showing care? Where we How do we become more and more inclusive? Therefore, we are minimizing the aspect of any harassment anywhere. So it actually promotes a allyship culture. And when I say allyship, I mean support to all the people to understand or to be about this together to prevent sexual harassment at the workplace by being more inclusive, by accepting diversity is definitely something organizations are doing more. And I think it's a great step in the right direction. So, yes, this must be embraced more and more going together. Yeah. Absolutely. Cannot agree more with you, uh, Pandana. What at Kelp we are also doing in our training programs is, uh, you know, pushing in unconscious biases. And as you said, inclusivity, uh, defining equity. So, because and creating a segue, can't look completely off, but creating a segue yeah. that how it is important in posh trainings, these concept understanding these concepts, yes. Those yes. concepts. So absolutely agree with you that the EA and posh are uh, in fact, i'm very glad you brought up the aspect of doing unconscious bias programs uh, and this is also something that stems from the top when i do programs like this for leaders you know this it's like a lot of uh, it's a lot of opening the eyes towards understanding of where are we being biased? And if leaders are biased, then we can't really talk about uh, levels below them. So these sessions actually act as a lot of uh, eye-openers for leaders to know what not to be, to start practicing inclusivity so that they can be those examples and role models for their team members to begin with and therefore percolate it to the rest of the organization. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much uh, for validating that. Uh, quickly, uh, Arokya, this is for you, that what happens if an organization fails to prioritize uh, or invest in posh training? I think that is also one of the questions which is there in our uh, on our chat also, that is, are there any consequences? Are there any consequences? You, you know, it's not like, you know, something like we can list it one, two or three. If organization is not prioritizing this, the consequences that you cannot count it, it will go on and go on. Because if organization fails to prioritize or adequately invest in posh, when I say I'm carefully choosing the word, invest in posh trainings, uh, because, you know, a um, lot of, you know, consequences, what organizations, if nobody is facing it, they are eradicating that because being the organization won the PASH award for, you know, two times. I can say that proudly that some of my problems, you know, eliminated because of more and more concentration, the people more and more talking about that. If organization fails to, you know, focus on this, definitely, number one, everybody aware that increased, you know, incidence of harassments. You are compliant, you are compliant, the number of, you know, incidents that are, you know, reported that will get, uh, you know, uh, increase with a higher frequency. And, um, you know, obviously, you know, the un unaddressed issues will create a lot of, you know, uh, negative talk about the organization. More than that, the legal and, uh, you know, financial repercussions. Uh, you may have some, you know, lawsuits or you may have some fines, penalties, and based on the, you know, regulatory penalties that you may end up, you know, paying for the, uh, you know, um, uh, paying for that. And also, the most important one, damage to the organization reputation. If you are not investing on that, 
you will have you know the reports of harassment and the organization failure to address that it can lead to a you know negative media coverage and damaging the company public image so definitely being a you know hr th that would impact me because i cannot you know attract the talent and people who are in the organization i may lose them because they will not have trust in the system so loss of you know trust may lead into lot of you know other problem uh, smita also um if i can you know think aloud uh, the employee morale will go down so if company is not investing in boss training when employee morale goes down because of all these you know the things i have you know previously previously mentioned the productivity will go down when the productivity goes down then most of the organization will jump in and find out the you know root cause of that and that is the reason i mentioned in the beginning of the session prevention is always cheaper than cure than better okay so also you know high turnover rates you will have employee retention you can have it and it will you know help recruitment uh, you know uh, it will help to overcome the recruitment challenges and uh, also you know if you are uh, kind of an organization organization focusing focused more on diversity and inclusion then this is the you know platform that you need to start up with this is the focus yeah. area you need to you know start up with because it break all the barriers of you know inclusion so definitely you know um, you can think of you know the, all these things and if you are a kind of an organization who are not at all compromised on the work work you know culture or you are not you know ready to accept any sort of you know toxic environment then go go behind it this is one of the topic that you must go after it yeah so from a business perspective like uh, arokya rightly mentioned these are the definite uh, repercussions of not prioritizing training Uh, also, from a safety perspective, when we do not orient our employees about, let's say, the importance of consent, to start with, even the understanding of the meaning of the word consent, right, is so crucial for our uh, people. Ah, uh, to talk about a uh, bystander intervention, do whatever you can. It all comes through training only. so when employers prioritize all of these aspects for taking care of so many safety aspects for your people so uh, prioritizing it is is like an absolute health must of course all the other repercussions that come with it also have to be borne by the employer so the worst one probably being that if it is not dealt with correctly the tarnish brand image of the employer is where they take a beating so trainings have to be prioritized uh, and all that comes with it in the right uh, way yeah absolutely i agree with you just one insight uh, vandana and arokya i mean uh, i i am sure you all know but i just wanted to add to the question that is asked uh, in the chat that uh, what are the repercussions i think while this what you all said is bang on there's one more thing that i wanted to add, uh, add or set the context is while the law is central the implementation is state wide and state wide they have their own implications uh, recently one of my client got called by one of the states uh, do district office and they were asked to come and present their case and they in that they wanted to see how many sessions they have conducted are they following the law where are the posters put up how are the policies so it can happen and it is happening randomly and if we are not on the right side then there are penalties and we know all the penalties right so why should we wait you know it's a very typical mindset that we'll wait and only if we get called we'll set up papers right i don't think it is the right thought process because you know going back dated and all that is really mucky and people are trying to do that kel stays away from organizations which want us to do that very clearly because we always want yeah. to be on the right side of the law so it is important yeah. that not wait for you to get a summon but please set your papers right ensure you're doing trainings ensure you're doing um, the five compliances that is listed by the law do not wait is is my only submission here and i have last but the most beautiful question arokya for you um, how do posh initiatives like posh awards uh, uh, create value 
uh, to the company's efforts in creating a safe and respectful workplace? Do such awards impact employee retention and attrition rates? I know you have mentioned it somewhere in between, but we really want to hear from you because you are our two-time award winner. So we really want to hear how does it? I cannot vouch more on that, um, you know, Smita. I think, you know, wherever I go, uh, you know, on this context, uh, I generally, you know, talk about this. And it's not something like, you know, I'm promoting Kelp. It's not something about, you know, I'm asking all the organizations to go behind this, you know, these kind of awards because not only Kelp, I see some other organizations also coming forward and, you know, conducting this. But why it is important? More than, you know, talking about why it is important being the, you know, the end, uh, you know, user, I have personally uh, witnessed and experienced the positive impact. Uh, of you know receiving these kind of you know awards earlier it was like only the you know hr's responsibility or posh committee's responsibility to create the safe and secure env environment now after the posh awards you know um, it is now on the you know ma management shoulders to maintain that Okay, so when I say that maintain that, it is actually, you know, they are ready to, you know, do anything, the initiatives that are, you know, taken by the uh, POSH committee as well as by the HRT. So all, also, if I'm, if I can, you know, think loud, this is the, you know, there are some, the organizations like Kel, you guys are, you know, recognizing and validate the efforts of the organization and in creating, you know, because most of the organization who are focused and one that, you know, top 25, they are focused more on, you know, making an harassment free workplace. So if somebody is coming and recognizing our effort, that is actually, you know, somebody is coming and patting our back and create, and it's like, you know, adding additional fuel to go extra mile. And, um, uh, hearing it from the, you know, various people, uh, about how, how they are, you know, innovatively, uh, you know, implementing the posh measures that is creating a lot of benchmark. And these kind of awards actually serves as a benchmark for, uh, you know, other organization because I'm also looking at other organization, how they are, you know, striving towards promoting the best practices across the industry. As I said, you know, being the, you know, mother of my employees, I have the greediness that my employees should not compare and go and, you know, uh, join the other, uh, you know, organization just looking at that. I'm not feeling safe here. If you are going behind the money, go and join. But never ever say that I'm not feeling safe here and that's the reason I go and join that. So that is actually, these kind of awards are actually helping us to benchmark our own successes. And also, you know, um, it and it is enhancing our reputation and a positive, you know, public image we are getting it, winning these kind of, you know, uh, posh awards actually, you know, it's in a positive, you know, image in front of the, uh, you know, other organizations and helping Absolutely. us. Absolutely. Okay. I think you have a very valid point there because Gen Z is very smart these days and is actually looking up websites wherein if you are a winner of such an award where you have competed, where you are good, where you are observing best practices, feel very proud to go and even get an interview, right? So there's a lot of, when you say public image, when you say that it's advocating a lot to the uh, people out there, yes, there are a lot of great pointers to receiving an award or to being a runner-up or to having competed and continuously doing so towards this. So I think way to go, uh, Kelp and yourself for, you know, um, making it so fabulously at the top twice in a row. Yeah. Yeah, Vandana. Actually, you know, not from the HR side, from the employee, being an employee of an organization, it is giving me the sense of pride. If yeah. when I'm, you know, I'm sending an email, it is actually, you know, I'm also attaching the Kelp HR, you know, the Porsche Award badge. That is actually... Mm -hmm you know, hitting the nail, uh, you know, on the head, like, hey, this place is the safe place to work. Somebody has recognized. So I I yeah. do have the responsibility to maintain that standard. So the sense of pride amongst the employee that is, you know, getting increased because of these kind of various recognitions and the, you know, awards that we are, uh, you know, receiving, receiving it. Also, it is actually, you know, the greediness, one level above, chasing after the continuous improvement 
ongoing commitment of you know uh, going after the continuous improvement of you know uh, uh, coming up with the innovative best practices so you guys are literally you know chasing us and you know making us to chase behind the you know the continuous improvement on the posh uh, uh, you know um, uh, innovative approaches uh, smita so i think you know these are all the things and also hr side if anybody you know i think i see that 29 participants 28 participants now um uh, if you are you know uh, winning these kind of awards you don't need to worry about your management why because that's no longer your own res your responsibility you are sharing the shoulder management also come in and whatever you ask your manager will approve your management will approve that the investment allocation of resources time you don't need to worry about it and that personally i'm experiencing that because that is what most of the hrs we face in a day day to day life even the employee engagement part thank you arokya that's <laughs> such a validation for some good work that we are doing and i think we've come almost like past yeah. one minute the time we have we had blocked and i see most of the answers are responded i i think on the on the chat also is there any answer which you feel uh, you need response to uh, uh, kin i uh, kinjal had asked a question on the chat is it more effective for an external member to do training than hr if if may i may i answer that yes please yeah. go so uh to kinjal and to everyone having that doubt in my opinion it's always better for an external member to be taking a training session for your employees simply because i think the external member comes with the rich experience of working in the space of being dealing with uh, you know training on a daily basis learn to take the right questions and give the right answers so it's always better also from an experience view point like i said to bring the right examples of what you see in terms of complaints into the training room so i would always say that as an option if you give anyone an option or if you're looking at an option any day an external member brings that flavor in a much more uh, comprehensive manner i would say than hr Uh, thank you so much, Vandana. And I cannot uh, uh, confirm this more uh, than what you said. It is absolutely important. There are subject matter experts there who uh, know it. They have handled cases. They know exactly how to handle a particular situation. They can share stories. It is very important that you bring expert on board to have these conversations. While I know a lot of HR folks uh, are very passionate, like Arokya herself, and they do some amazing job too, yeah, um, I think it, it it is a call that as an organization, as an employer, as an IC yeah. member, y'all should all take together. And thank you yeah. very much for all your time. I had a can I just ask a question? It was yeah. asked in the chat, but not answered. Uh, just two minutes, if it's possible. Yes, Benita, I thought I answered your question uh, about uh, uh, what are the penalties, right? That was your question. Yes. Uh, yeah, who will who do a person report to? You can't report to anybody. I mean, so what is the legal status then? They are they are doing something illegal, but it's not being reported. There is no penalty. Then why are certain organizations not keen to do this? Then what is it? Keep we can tell them that oh, you are supposed to do it. So Benita, also has has to be some penalty, some enforcing agency which ensures the law is uh, implemented. If it's not, then uh, the value of law is not there, isn't it? Can I answer? Benita, can I respond? Okay. So there is a agency called, I mean, there is a place called a district officer which are, who are supposed to look at all the reports and call people who have not done it. See, in our country, we, we are huge, right? Our numbers are huge, right? People file their report and they must be filing zero. So ideally, there should be questions asked. And I mentioned, I think you missed my response, that while the law is central, the implementation of it is state-wise, every district officer is responsible. Unfortunately, I think they have lack of resources where they can pull up. Uh, you and me, I, I don't know what's your role in reporting about this. Do not, I mean, there is no provision or platform for us to go and report against somebody right 
I don't think they have created it yet. But uh, people who are doing, yes, yes, are okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. But uh, to answer her question specifically, uh, employees who do not comply with the provision of, you know, POSH Act, uh, the, um, you know, um, the organization can be fined up to, uh, you know, 50,000 rupees. And the if an employer is found guilty of non-compliances, you know, again and again, if it's repeated offense, and the fines can, fine can be, you know, doubled. And also, the repeated offense can lead to the cancellation of, you know, business licenses or whatever the registration is re required to carry it out, the, you know, the businesses. Yeah, yeah. And this is the only law of the land, I guess, that can take away your license for not being compliant. Sure. So, but yeah, then, like, like Smitha has pointed out, probably inspections uh, need to go on a lot more uh, robust than what it was. Uh, but uh, I think if that actually starts, then that will put a cap on many of the organizations who are turning a blind eye to training still. Yeah, Vinita? Thank you so much. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time, all of you. I had a lovely time speaking to these lovely people here. I hope all of y'all are taking back. And in our conversation, when we started, we said that only that one hour y'all are investing and we really want to give y'all something when you leave and something that you can resonate, something that you can think about, something that you can reflect. I hope you're taking that back. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Arokya. I had lovely thank time. You so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.